Hey everybody, Bill1911 here. I'm here today with my assistant gunsmith, Scamp, um, and he's going to take us through the beginning of a five-part series on some of the rifles that were used during World War II. Um, we're going to start out with the M1 carbine. Now, this is a, actually a pretty small rifle, as you can see. It's not very long. It shoots a 30 caliber bullet, um, but it, um, it didn't have the knockdown power of some of the larger guns that we're going to take a look at um, later on in this series. Uh, we're also going to look at the uh, Springfield 03A3, which was the American Bolt Action 3006 rifle. We're going to look at the M1 Garand, which was the semi-automatic uh, 3006 rifle of the US. We're going to look at the British Enfield. Um, the one I have is actually a, a very, very rare gun. Uh, it has stamped right on the receiver, Property of the USA. Most likely it was part of the Lend-Lease uh, Act that we used during World War II. Um, we traded guns back and forth with our allies. Uh, Australia used that gun. Britain used that gun. Um, New Zealand used that gun. There were several several places that did. Uh, so we're going to be looking at the Enfield. Um, we are also going to look at the Mosin Nagant, which was the rifle that was made famous by the Russian sniper Vasily Saitsev. Um, he wasn't their most prolific sniper, but he was very good, and he was a propaganda boon for them. They, they loved their Vasily Zaitsev. He did really good things for them uh, in the Battle of Stalingrad. So with that, we're going to get down to the nuts and bolts of this little guy right here, the M1 carbine. Okay, so this is our M1 carbine. Uh, in order to take this thing apart, we are going to need a screwdriver, but just for one screw on the whole gun, All right, which I'm going to show you in just a moment. Before I get to that, the first thing we're going to do is we are going to check and clear the gun. Make sure that it does not have any ammunition in it. Well, as we can see, there's no magazine in the gun, so that's part one. Part two. We pull the bolt back and we physically look inside the chamber, which I am going to show you now. Okay, bolt comes back. You can look in and you can see that there's no round in that chamber, no magazine. Okay, so we've determined that this gun is not loaded. Even though we've determined it's not loaded, we are going to continue to practice our three gun safety rules. One, always keep the gun pointed in a safe direction. Two, Always keep your finger off that trigger until you're ready to shoot the gun. And three, always keep the gun unloaded until you're ready to use it. Okay, these rules will really help you from having some kind of a disaster that you don't want to have to live with. So, no more me, need me said about that. Let's start taking a look here. Now, right up here on the front of the gun is a band that goes around this barrel. But it's also a metal sheath that completely encases the barrel at this point. All right. So in order to get the gun apart, we have to loosen this screw that's right here. Okay. So the screw, if it's undamaged, won't come all the way out. Okay. It comes to the end of the thread and it stops. That's it. It stops. Don't force it. Okay. If this band opens up on you, it's kind of difficult to get that darn bolt back through there. It's kind of a pain in the neck. So my advice is don't take that bolt all the way out. All right, so the next thing we have to do is this part right here is a kind of a spring, okay? And it has a hook right here on the end of it. Now, this hook, okay, catches on this band and prevents it from moving forward. So in order to get this off, we are going to have to depress that hook down away from that metal sheath and then push that metal sheath outward, okay? Now, sometimes they don't want to come real easy. Sometimes you're going to kind of fight with them a little bit. But once you get that thing slid forward off the end of the stock, 
that's what you want. You want it that far forward. From there, we're going to take the top of the stock off. Okay, now it just kind of comes off, it just pops off. But it's important to note that right back here on the back of this top stock, okay, there's a metal tab in here. This metal tab hooks underneath this little plate right here in the receiver, okay, and holds the back of the top handguard in place. All right, so you just need to know it's there when we go to put it back together. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is take the gun out of the stock, which is really, really simple. Okay, this is how you do it. You simply pick up on the front of the barrel and it scissors right out of the stock just like that. That's it. That's all there is to taking it out of the stock. Okay, so from there, we're going to take the rest of this gun apart. We don't need any more tools to take this apart. It can all be done by hand from here, all right? So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take the trigger group off. Now you're going to want to make sure that the hammer is cocked. And the way you can do that is simply grab the charging lever and pull it all the way back, and let it go back forward. Now that is going to verify that the hammer right here on the trigger group is cocked. So from there, there's only one pin to take this whole trigger group out, okay? And it just fell right out of the gun. So, let me show you what's supposed to happen, all right? That pin is right here, okay? So, you're going to just give it a little push, okay? And then extract it from the other end. It comes right out. Once that pin comes out, okay, the entire trigger group can slide back off the gun. Just comes right out, okay? It can also go forward. It'll go either way you want to go is fine. It just slides into place, okay? That takes your trigger group off your gun. From there, we're going to need to take the operating rod and operating rod spring out. What is the operating rod? Okay, right here, the handle. You operate the gun with this rod. Okay, you pull it back and forth, all right? So that's the op rod or operating rod. In order to take it out, we need to first have the bolt all the way forward, okay? And the reason why is because we're going to have to pull this spring back and then kind of weasel it out past it. If it's not all the way forward, we don't have the room to get that spring out. So we're going to pull it back, okay, and slide it to the side like that, and the whole thing will come right out, just like that, okay? So once we have our op rod spring out, now we can concentrate on taking out the op rod. Now, what's going to happen is right back here on the, on the receiver, you're going to find a little cutout right here. It's kind of like a, a little half moon shaped cutout, okay? That little cutout corresponds to a, a lug that's on the side of this. So we're going to pull it back to that point, okay, and kind of be pulling out on it, okay? And we're going to slide it back and forth until it comes out, which it will do, okay? Once it comes out, okay, we can push the bolt backward, okay, and that disengages it from the operating rod, okay. Now, from there, we can just push the darn operating rod back forward and get it out of the way, because now we're going to take the bolt out. And in order to take the bolt out, you kind of twist it a little bit when you're back here in the back, and it will rotate. Now, underneath, I'm going to show you right here on the back of the bolt, this is the firing pin, okay. Now that firing pin has to pass through this little notch right here in the receiver. Okay, so we're going to simply slide it out. And that removes the bolt. Now for the, the op rod to come out. There is another cutout. Okay, and that's right here. This cutout is designed to allow us to move the op rod backward and kind of twist it until it pops 
right off the frame, just like that, okay? That has our gun completely disassembled, and the only thing we needed to do it with was a screwdriver. Well, back in the war, if you didn't have a screwdriver, this would also work with a dime or a penny, or even the back end of a cartridge case could be put in there to use to wrench it around. So you could get that bolt out if you had to, without tools. Um, it's a lot easier with a screwdriver, so I'm going to use a screwdriver. All right, so from there, we would clean the gun just like we would normally clean any gun, okay? Now, there is one thing that I did want to show you that I think it's kind of important, so I am going to show it to you, okay? You can take your rod, your gun cleaning rod, okay? and your ferrule, which I have to get out of the box here. And that ferrule can be used, yes, it can be used to mop the, the barrel and get it all cleaned up inside, that is true. But it also can do something else for us that cannot be done with a jag. Now, usually I prefer to use a jag, but in this case, you can't really use the jag for that. Now, here's where the problem comes in with this gun. You can't use, I'm going to use the short cleaning rod, not that it'll reach, but you'll get the idea. You can't put your cleaning rod in through the back of the breech here, okay? It, it won't go, okay? So being that that's the case, you can't clean it from the back. That puts us in a position where the only way to clean this is through the muzzle, unless you want to use a 30 caliber bore snake, which... I would highly recommend on one of these, and I will show you a boar snake in the next episode, okay? So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to put our thimble on our gun cleaning rod, okay? Then we're going to take our patch, our cleaning patch, and we would normally wet it with our, our cleaning solvent, but I'm not going to this time because this gun... Uh, it isn't terribly dirty. It's a little dirty, but not too bad. Um, we're going to slide our patch through the ferrule, fold it diagonally, and slide it through the ferrule. All right. Now, once we've got it installed, we simply push it up the barrel. Okay. Now, when we get down here to the breech end, okay, what we're going to try to do is we're going to push it most of the way through but not all the way and then we're going to try and pull it backwards to make it bunch up you see how it kind of knotted up there well that's exactly what we want it to do so we're going to pull it back a little bit until we start feeling the resistance of the rifling it'll just hit right up against there and then we're just going to twist our rod and you'll hear it squeak and that's what we want to happen so what's happening is where the chamber has been cut in the barrel for the cartridge. What we're doing right now is on that edge where the machining comes down and it's kind of square, we're getting our patch up into that corner and cleaning that corner out simply by bunching that patch up and twisting it. Okay, from there, we push it back out. We remove it from the ferrule, okay? If you have trouble with it, just grab the ferrule and twist the rod the opposite direction. It'll unscrew. Okay, so we remove our ferrule, and that, as you can see, kind of cleaned out some stuff that was in our chamber, okay, that was missed when we just used the cleaning jag, okay? So uh, it's, it's a good way to get into the edge of that chamber to clean that little ridge out that's in there, okay? So... That's the M1 carbine. Now, there is one thing I wanted to point out, and that's this little part right here. This is called the gas piston, okay? Now, there's a hole that's drilled in the barrel, okay? And it allows the gas from inside the barrel, that high-pressure gas, to come back, and it shoves that piston back so hard that it hits the back of this operating rod okay if you can look you might see the mark where it hammers against it right down in here if i can get just the right angle right there you see that round circle okay that's where that piston slaps up against this thing so hard 
that it shoves it all the way back with the bolt and everything. It all, the whole thing comes back and cycles the rifle. So this is under a tremendous amount of pressure. Um, you're going to want to try and keep it so it's nice and loose. If it's moving like that, you're probably in good shape. Okay. So to put the gun back together, we are simply going to reverse the operation of taking it apart. All right. So we're going to take our operating rod or op rod, and there are two lugs, one here and one here. This one is going to hook into this little trough right here. Okay. So we're going to hook that one in, and the other one is going to rotate on through that cutout where we took it apart. All right, so we're just going to get it in place, and might have to move it around. There it went. Went right in. Okay. Now that's got our operating rod back physically in the gun. Okay. Now what I just made a mistake on was when I pulled this forward, that op rod dropped right back in through that cutout right there and it's now locked in place. Well, we don't want it to be locked in place right now. It needs to be a little bit out. It needs to have that free play, okay, so that we can get our bolt back into position. So we're going to move it forward a little bit, okay. So it's up here, it's out of the way, it's not a problem. And then we're going to reinstall our bolt. Remember the firing pin on there has to go through that little trough that's right there in the bottom of the receiver. Once it goes in, okay, we can kind of slip it in like that, all right? Now, there's only one little hitch in the get along, okay? This op rod has to catch on that bolt and pull it back together, all right? From that point, once it reaches that cutout, it's gonna drop right back into place and you're reassembled, okay? So that's got your bolt back in the gun. Now you're gonna wanna push it all the way forward because you can't put the operating rod spring back in until you do. From there we simply insert it into the hole, slide it back, okay, and kind of push it past. Well, these things are kind of stiff. So what you might find you want to do is get something, some kind of tool to protect your thumb from this little pointed end of this thing. Okay, so we're going to push it back into position and you'll see it'll just kind of pop in, okay, ah, like that, okay. Now, usually you got to fight with it. That one just fell right back into its, its position where it's supposed to be, which you can see here is that little hole, okay, and it just kind of pops into there. Now, that's got your op rod spring, your op rod, and your bolt reassembled, okay, and everything is working just the way it should. Okay, so from here, we're going to put the trigger group back on. Okay, not a difficult thing to do, but one thing that's important, if you accidentally pulled the trigger and the hammer is forward, you're not going to be able to get it packed together. It's just, it's just going to fight you the whole way. So the best thing to do is just take your thumb and your finger and push it back. It's not hard to do that. This, this hammer moves pretty darn easily. It's not a big fight to get it to cock, okay? Um, you would think that darn spring would be a lot stronger than that, but it's really not that hard. The hammer gives you plenty of leverage to push it back. Once it's cocked, this thing will just kind of slide right back into place. And once you've got it lined up, you're going to put your pin right back through that hole. And you now have the trigger, the hammer, everything is reassembled on the guts of this gun. So from there, we're going to put the stock back on. Now, on the back of the rifle, okay, there is kind of a hook, okay, and that's right here. That hook hooks underneath this metal part in the back of the stock, okay. It just hooks right in underneath it. Okay, you slip it in, hook it underneath, and just scissor the thing down, okay? Once it goes back into stock, make sure it's seated all the way. And then we're going to put the front of the stock on, okay? The, this is your, uh, your hand guard, okay? 
you're going to slip that underneath like we talked about before. I'm going to show you this on the other camera because it does my close-up stuff. Okay. That little metal piece, okay, slides right up underneath into that little slot that we showed you before. Okay. Now once that's into place, that's your upper hand guard is on. And from here, you're going to slide that sheath back down onto the gun. But it's only going to let you go so far before that spring catch gets in the way and causes you a little bit of a problem. So you're going to have to depress that with your thumb and push that slide back over the top of it. Okay, once it's over the top of it, it's no problem pushing it back the rest of the way. You just got to make sure your stock's in the right place and back you go. Now once it's in, that thing's going to pop back into place and lock it in. So from there, we tighten up our screw, and we are reassembled. Okay, once that's snugged up, you're back together, and that is your M1 carbine ready to go. Now there was something I wanted to show you, and that is that there is a way, if you want, you can decock this gun, but I want to be real clear on the safety. If you have a round in the chamber on this thing and you try to do this and that bolt slips out of your hand, it is possible to set the gun off doing what I'm going to show you. So the first, very first thing you do if you're going to try to decock this gun is pull it all the way back and physically look and make sure that there is no round in that chamber before you even start this process. We want to be certain. All right, so we're going to take this bolt uh, or um, operating rod handle and we're just going to push it back until we feel the bolt just touch up against the hammer. You'll feel it make contact. It'll go further, but you don't want it to do that. You want it to just make contact. From there, you're going to pull the trigger, okay, and allow that bolt to come forward slowly. Okay, after you've done that, it's decocked. Okay, you can pull the trigger all day long. To recock it, pull it back, it's recocked. Okay, and if you pull the trigger, you'll hear it. Okay, so this does work. You just push it back until it touches, pull the trigger, and let it come back forward, and you're decocked. This also works on the M1 Garand and on the M14. I'm going to stress on that one more time about that safety of verifying that that chamber is empty because it is possible if that bolt gets away from you to pop that cartridge and make it go off. Well, that's your World War II M1 carbine. These were issued to officers. Uh, it's my understanding that the United States Army intended this to replace the 1911 sidearm that officers were issued. Now, personally, if it's me, yeah, I want the rifle. But I don't want to have to give up my 1911 sidearm to get it. I want both. Okay? If I run out of ammunition with this, I've got seven lifesaver bullets in that, in that 1911. So I'm going to want to carry both. But that's my M1 carbine. Uh, it's just a beautiful little gun that I've just been in love with for years. It's a real sweetheart. Okay, so the next gun we're going to concentrate on on the next episode is the M1 Garand. Now, this particular gun is something of a mongrel, okay? I was able to acquire a, um, a receiver, a blank receiver, okay? didn't have any parts on it at all and I bought all of the parts for this and assembled this M1 Garand from parts. Now some of the things it's got that are really nice it has a match grade barrel on it so this thing is exceedingly accurate I mean I can flat dot your eye with this rifle okay now this is a heavy gun it was made it to be a battle rifle so you could smack it if you had to you whatever you needed to do but we're going to go over all of that on the next episode. I'm Bill1911. We'll see you on the next one. Hey everybody, Bill1911 here. 
If you found this video to be helpful and informative, don't forget to like us and please subscribe and by all means come to visit us at askbill1911.com. Also, I want to talk to you about something that's very important to us and that's your safety. So please don't try any of the things you see on our videos until you have thoroughly reviewed and understood our safety procedures. If you are under 18 years of age, do not try any of these topics without the express permission of your parent or guardian. Thank you.